Hey, you can almost go to the bank with that little song, man. We may never pass this way again. I ain't passing this way again. Enough is enough, you know. This journey's been incredible. It's been enlightening and frightening and disgusting and beautiful and exp exponential and expansive and the lovingest experience I could ever have in any lifetime. Right here in the few meager years I put in here, I have had a great time being miserable, most of it, till I got out of that misery and found a, a real life, and then I could live. Took me a long time, 40-something years before. I mean, I did a lot of living before that. Believe you me, I'm that kind of guy, and I never lose it entirely, but I do lose it at times, man. Some people have seen me lose it, and they go, oh, my God. God, how can that old man be such a rager, yet such a peaceful old fool, too, able to heal things and shit, yet look at him, he's so wounded, man. You know? <laughs> I dealt with that rage for a long time. It was a righteous rage, and that's why it was so hard to get rid of, you know, and rid is the wrong word, but, you know, to get it on with, let's say, because, you know, rage can be a creative tool in your little toolbox if you don't let it take the, the sway of it, you know what I mean? I mean, like this morning, some fly landed on me in the wrong place, and I said, fly, mm -mm. and they heard me, you know, I was raging too, <laughs> but nothing like I used to. It's amazing. The feelings inside are completely different now from where they were. The polarity in myself has ended, and therefore these attacks upon my person will cease and desist. You know, uh, and we'll have a hell of a lot better time on this old Coyote Medicine show than we ever did before. It's going to get real exponential now, don't you know? Because, you know, we have turned some real corners. I could feel it Saturday when I was over there at Soaktoberfest. Oh, babies, I'm telling you, I was feeling so miserable Friday. After the show was great, but then after a while I started whew, sinking. And I was so tired come Saturday morning, I didn't even want to get out of bed, let alone go to Soaktoberfest. But I saw that Marquita, my flaming redhead over there. Oh, she's such a gorgeous, oh, beautiful uh, soul presence in this reality. And she puts together all these little special events for us over there. Marquita, or Reverend Mo, as she is affectionately called amongst the troopers over there at Joyful Journey Hot Springs. Well, we had a great little Soaktoberfest. Man, some of the best local music I've heard in a long time. I swear Janis Joplin and Bob Dylan were back on stage up there with River Burt and the band and so forth, man. I'm telling you, it was some awesome stuff, man. And tunes that your heart could roll into. And, you know, because I was feeling a little off, I wasn't able to party as much as I would have liked. But I still had a great time, met some really good people, signed a few books, you know, things like that. Had a great time doing it. And babies, the weather was perfect, and Oki had a great time, you know. He did do one little boo-boo. He peed on my neighbor's packing bag, you know, right away. I don't know why he did that. Mark and Turf, uh, for some reason or another, well, it was on the ground for starters. That's fair game when you got a dog around. But then I should have watched him a little closer so I could have kept him out of trouble. But he didn't really get in trouble. He's like me. He just gives him them dewy little eyes and the trouble kind of melts away or at least, you know, becomes somewhat tolerable, you know. <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm feeling so much better today, though, especially after that crystal bed treatment yesterday. I'm going to have some details for you. See, I think I'm going to get this uh, lady with that particular bed to be one of our sponsors here on the Coyote Medicine Show because she really deserves a... A little business and she's a, a, a sweet and independent soul that's willing to let you go where you need to go and use this divine instrument in her hands as your heart sees fit and she's a beautiful soul for that because so many of them want to control the flow of your experience there in some way or another and so they'll set up parameters and so forth all you do here really is just go there and you know, before you go, you write down why you're going, you know, some of the intentions you'd like to see uh, happen for yourself, you know, and that sets your intention, and that pretty much sets the experience you'll have there. So if you set your intention, oh, I just want to be happy, well, they're going to work on your happiness aspects. They really will. There's a whole team on the other side of that thing, at least for me, and I know there will be for you, too. We're all coyotes, man. Coyotes work in teams. 
even though when you see us, you see us alone a lot because we are lone critters, but we're always teamed up with the tribe. You just don't, we're just not as visible and obvious about it as, you know, schools of fish would be, for example, or schools of human beings as they all go to the grocery store at the same time, to the rock concert at the same time, etc. You guys are such complete... Uh, collective fools and don't even know it, man. <laughs> but it's so good to be able to experience these li this life at these higher levels again, you know, to be back where I'm relaxed inside and where, you know, I don't have anything particular to deal with. Now, I've still got my skin cancers, but babies, they like this, the, the big one, which has been there for more than a year, uh, kind of exploded yesterday. <laughs> it was a little gruesome when I looked at it. Oh, my God. I can't imagine what the smell was like because it does have a stench to it and it does that. But babies, it's through. I can tell. This morning it's all, the swelling's all going down and it's a big old uh, lump there. It's like dead or something. I don't know. It's got life in it though because it's got a nice healthy skin color to the sides of it. It's like in some kind of really, it's a stubborn thing, but it's really in some, amazing to me to watch this stuff. You know, I, I, uh, really, even though I fought it once before, well, fight is the wrong word, but back then that's what I knew. You know, but anyway, even though I beat it once before, let's say, I, you know, being the, the vessel of love that allowed the universe to help me, which I'm doing right now, too, babies. I've been, you know, I'm not grabbing at straws. I'm grabbing at paradise as it comes to me, you know. And the universe has been providing me just the right opportunities at just the right time. And I'm healing this shit. I still may have to go to this surgery in a couple of weeks. And I may not. I don't know. We'll see if the thing uh, just decides to evaporate. That sure would be sweet. But whatever. I mean, you know, I'm willing. And I'll be here for you one way or the other here on this Coyote Medicine Show because I ain't going anywhere, babies. You know, it's risky business when you're dealing with this cancer stuff. But I find it fascinating. You know, because I just, I, I never realized that, you know, like a virus or something, it has its own intelligence, you know. It's got its own little survival instinct. Once it starts on you, it don't want to go away until you're dead. You know, it's pretty gruesome stuff, really. You know, and I can see that it was, you know, probably genetically engineered in somebody's lab at some time. That's where the cancers all come from. You notice back 150 years ago, there wasn't hardly any, and now they're all over the place. Well, a lot of that's the radiation in the atmosphere that you did not have 150 years ago that I know about anyway. There might have still been nukes around even in those days, but if they were used, it was really, really quiet, and nobody knew about it. And I don't think they were back in those days. I think that's something we kind of worked our way back into, because we've certainly had a nuclear holocaust or two here before on this earth, and had to stand down and wait a while till she rehabilitated before we could come back and start again. Human beings have been through at least 32 different stages like that. Well, not necessarily nuclear war every time. That was a couple times, but there have been other uh, big disasters here. You know, humanity gets to the point where it is about now, as far as the visible world goes, where we got Tweedledee and Tweedledum running for office for president, and total criminals running everything else across this earth, and everybody on the take, and everybody, you know, I mean, not everybody, thank God, but it's a widespread thing that, the integrity of this earth has none. It's gone out the window. The people have no integrity. They've sold themselves short a million times for this almighty dollar once again. Jeez, and now it's going to turn on them just like all traitorous beings do. The dollar has nothing to it. There's no substance, no form to it. There's no reality to it. It's stupid on the surface of it. Anybody believe that shit, myself included, has got to be a little bit nutso to do it. Well, maybe we're getting out of our nutso stages. Maybe we're finally learning that it's better to be sincere and real in this life than it is to pursue anything, most especially money. There's no power in that. The only real power in this life is to find, once again, inside of yourself, the ability to be the loving dreamer that you are and to redream your creation so it's a little more equitable for you and everybody else. That's the human lesson here. And when you get that one, you've graduated and we move on, baby, with the earth, right back to our normal birth. B-E-R-T-A is the place where we're, you know, our ship is always docked, man. Right there at the center of the universal heart, man. 
And we're the spiritual mechanics through which Mother Earth does create. You see, a Mother Earth is the living symbology and home and temple of the mother love of creation. That's why she's at the center of everything. That's the heart of everything. And that's the heart of the matter of creation. That's where rock and roll comes from. Mother Earth's heart, man. And I say Earth real loosely because she's just a planet, but she's also the reality around us, too. You see, she is all of creation. Through her comes the creation, same as you were created through your mother, too. In an odd sort of way, off-handed sort of way in this 3D. It's going to, what? But again, it's one of those fascinating things to watch babies grow up in your belly and just pop out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you got contention in hell for the next 30 years. <laughs> or something like that. Hopefully, your kids are a little sweeter than that and they understand. But they always do. I don't care what the kids are or how unrebellious they are. They're going to blow that shit back in your face time and time again. Because that's you looking back at you, trying to remind you that you're Mother Earth, too. You know, and when you catch on to that, things will go a whole lot better for you, man. Then the family life won't be so out of whack. Because you won't be living in a tiny little tribe all isolated in a neighborhood in a tiny little cracker box of a house. Screw that. That's no way to live. And you can't raise your kids that half decent. That's why we've got such a psychotic society right now. Because most of us are raised in irregular households that don't have a life. And we have to go find it after we get out of there. But they try to kill you again and again. Sometimes literally, sometimes psychologically, spiritually, all the time. These beings around you hate you and hate your light. Your own parents, they love you, but they hate you. And you feel it. Isn't that weird? I remember that feeling, man, when I would not be what they wanted me to be. I was so damn defiant as a kid. And it's the only thing I could find in my toolbox then was defiance, rage. So I did. And screw you, I ain't doing this stuff, you know. Of course you waffle at times because you have your doubtful moments, but mainly it was like, no, I ain't doing that. Little, you know, they had a routine figured out for me from day one. And if I just followed the footsteps of that, I could have been a zombie just like them, but I would have been, you know, a powerful being in this reality. I would have had, you know, all that money and wealth and fame and fortune to go with it, you know. At least their kind of it. Ooh. But, you know, I look at the, you know, like like this national disgrace we got running for office right now. And I'm talking about the whole political spectrum. You know, I mean, I like Bernie and I like Jill Stein, etc. But the whole political spectrum is just lost. You know, I mean, the people at the top only reflect the ones down under them. And they're, they're even worse. Senators and congressmen, you guys are just more than disgusting, more than a national disgrace. You're just like nothing. You sold your soul to the devil so long ago, and you hate your people. <laughs> and go to rituals that try to kill them all, all the time, man. You guys aren't fooling anyone. The truth is known, and it's out there all over the place. WikiLeaks is barely the beginning, you dumb mother truckers. You're in it now, man. And see, and I'm keeping it more civil now. I'm watching my language. I get passionate about things sometimes, you know. And I am an old truck driver, but even before that, when I was born... I had very emphatic language, you know. I think my my first words were, oh, fuck, or something like that. You know what I mean? When I screwed up somewhere, or, oh, shit, or something like that, you know. Because <laughs> I've always had colorful language. But I have learned to be expressive and not vulgar with it. See? So, you know, if I give a little added emphasis here, here and there and fudge that PG-13 a little bit with words, please forgive me and understand that it's... I needed emphasis at the time or it wouldn't slip through on me, you know. I mean, I'm really just a heart and soul that's here to experience right along with you some simultaneous energies of dawning, revelation, revealing, as you call it, you know. That's what I'm here for. That's what we do, man, day after day, Monday through Friday on this Coyote Medicine Show in that Coyote way, don't you know? So, baby, that's why we stroll this way. You know, and that's why this Coyote Medicine shows here day after day, Monday through Friday on the Everclear AZ Radio Network there. Woo, the center of your loving heart. Center of my universal heart, let me tell you. Ah. 
So, God, we had a great day the other day with uh, Joyful Journey and the gang over there and Marquita and all the rest of the crew. And uh, the music was just awesome and the day was just perfect. The crowd was a little light. You guys got to get your ambitions up a little more. But I know that was the first one, so next year we'll have a crowd 10, 15,000 there. And, you know, in the year after that, who knows? We might take over the whole dang valley. Now, that would take about all the people on earth to be... Uh, standing in this valley because this this uh san Luis valley is a huge place i'm sure we could standing up we could probably get all seven and a half billion of us in here i'm pretty sure <laughs> now that would be one hell of a rock concert we'd have to put the band in a ufo up in the sky though to make it work otherwise you couldn't hear them man <laughs> that's what we need to do man relax See our earth as we really want it to be and consciously work to change it that way inside of ourself. If you don't approve of what's going on out here, and I certainly don't, well, don't tolerate it in yourself. Find a more loving way. Find the peaceful way where the power is, man. And we will still, all of these god dang machines they got aligned against us, they're ready for peaceful protest. They ain't gonna let it be peaceful, but baby... If we can find this love in our heart, we can rise up as a nation and show this earth how it is to end the bullshit and bring in real revolution. And I'm not talking about governmental change. I'm talking about governmental dissolution as the reality that provides the need for governments dissolves around us. As we go out and protest the shills and the swines and I won't even call them swine because, you know, pigs are pretty classy and these guys ain't, you know. I mean, I look at these, these sleazy boogers that run this thing and I, just, you know, hang my head in shame that they're even human. That they even pretend to be human, but most of them ain't. <laughs> they got a little left in them. We got to bring it back. See, I mean, you got to feel sorry for them on that level, you know, and not in the sorry way that you'd give them anything because you don't, you give those guys an inch, they'll take five miles. So when I'm saying feeling sorry, you got to empathize with their position. got to understand what happened that got them there. They were really hurt. And that's why they're so hurtful to others. Because that pain just lasts forever and it just keeps fueling it. So I know I've lived with it. Believe it or not. And I've had to go around it day after day here on the Coyote Medicine Show. And in my regular life too, I've just had to go around it and go around it and go around it. Keep working on it, keep working on it, keep working on it. And finally the time comes. You find the means to deal with it. And finally it begins to dissolve away. And your whole modus operandi, your whole way of being changes. Because you start to realize you really are a centered heart. And in your person is the complete capability of creation. And it's not frightening when you finally realize that. It's kind of reinforcing. Finally you're getting some confidence in yourself. You see? Finally, you're coming true to yourself and true to your life, too. And babies, it will change you completely. It will change your life completely. It will change this earth completely. And that's why we're doing it. Otherwise, why bother? If it's going to be the same old shit and we're just going to have some dumbass, cheap-ass, sleazy politicians running us around, well, that just don't make no sense, now does it? I mean, look at the past. I mean, war after war after war after war, fight after fight after fight, hassle after hassle after hassle, regulations till you just want to puke, you know, and then you do, and it doesn't do any good. You just got to clean it up and go on with your life anyway, you know. See, we've had enough. We knew better all along. We just didn't quite realize how to change it just yet, but now we do. See, because we've been through enough of it now. You, there, There is... A point. I, there are no limits, of course, in creation, and there are no real, um, what do you call it, edges. No. That's just life ever flowing and ever expanding and ever growing and happily so, and that's our true reality. Time has stood still and does stand still. Time is the illusion where you can feel the agony and the pain, without which, you know, all there is is constant love. And that's what's in your agony and pain, too, if you'll just see it and love yourself for being it and putting up with it for so long. Then you understand why you do and you'll let it go. You'll change the way you rock. 
and you'll rock with the roll. You'll, you'll feel rock on one side and roll on the other. And in the middle of that little tiny end, it says rock and roll. <laughs> Joined with both words, and that's your heart in the center, man. Rock and roll. See, and it, just like rock and roll works together, tribal beat and guitars and voices, etc., man. You know, same way with your inner workings, man. It's such a beautiful blessing. And then you start to blossom into creation. It's the most amazing feeling there could ever be because you really do start to feel your place here. And you know when you do? Nobody can knock you out of it or blow you away in any way, man. Because you see, we're beyond any silliness, illusions, any of that stuff. You're living in a steady, happy state. It's constant. It's not like the old moody states we used to be in where we'd have great feelings and cosmic expansion for a while and then swing completely the other way for a while. This is the reunion of the heart. This is when you realize the heart is one piece, not two. And it's best represented that way. It can have two sides. Well, everybody does. Rock has roll and roll has rock, don't you know? That's coyote medicine through and through. That's rock and roll through and through. That's Marilyn and El Elvis engaged forever in the eternal pleasure of love while performing greatly for us and letting us enjoy it too. I mean, you know, goodness gracious, you've got to move beyond the stinky little parameters we've lived in and realize how restricted we've been here, man, and how stupid our life has been. I mean, you know, this is the one thing I do get when I go to this city is like, oh my God, I'm glad I don't have to live this way. How do people do it? I've lived, you know, in the city, well, not a big one, not Denver. I lived in Boulder, which is, you know, a sidebar to it. And now it's getting to be a metropolis of itself. But there for a while, it was just a small, small city and it was fun, you know, and probably still is too, but it's awful crowded and awful build up and awful busy now, more so than it ever was before. In Denver, hell, they're gaining 10,000 people, new residents a month. You other states better catch on and legalize before we buy you out and make you Colorado too. And you'll have to abide by our liberal laws and thinking, ha, 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 how about that, eh? Legalized dispensaries on every corner in Oklahoma City and Nashville too, baby. <laughs> I can wait for the day, and I see it coming, man. It's going to even be even better than that, because they won't be dispensaries, like here in Colorado. The greed thing, you know, is on its way out. There'll be giveaways, man. Marijuana giveaways on every street corner in every city in the U.S. of A., and probably across the earth, too, as we grow up a little bit, you know. This October's leading to a really good November, and we're going to get some reinforcement. Well, we're getting it already this month, you know, in a very strong sort of way. The people of this earth are going to get some backup. So they know their ass is covered, so they will be brave. We will be brave and step out there when, when the time comes. Because it's, you feel the call. You feel that something's happening, and you know there's going to be huge gatherings of people. And it ain't going to be protest this time, babies. It's going to be hell no. You no mo. We're going to love ourselves out of the old reality. And we're going to show them cosmically how it's done. Where the real power is. Okay, guys? We're dismantling the war machine right along with it. I'm sorry, guys. I know you worked really hard on that. All you engineers and thieves and thugs and warlords and shit like that. I know, you really busted your ass this time, haven't you? Just like you did back in the Atlantean days and stuck us with shit-headed things like biting insects and stuff. You royal turkey turds. <laughs> but still, the love of our human heart, and we don't hate you for it. We understand the controls, uh, the enlistment of the heart, the, the degrading of it to the point where you don't have one. We understand the condition it takes to get you there. Whether you've realized yourself through it or not, we know you were tortured and tormented by murderous sons of bitches from the early days in your life. You wouldn't be a general in the army if that wasn't true. You wouldn't be a president or a senator or congressman or a rock star or a juvenile delinquent down there in East L.A. if that weren't true. See, we have our appointed ways. And that's one of them, you know. You're going to play the game that way until you learn to play it another way. Until your heart opens up enough that you can say, I'm at peace now. 
I don't have to play that way anymore. I don't, you know, I got a good game going on here, and I don't need that one out there. We're changing that, baby. You know, you start talking to your friends and neighbors. Pretty soon, the whole community is rising up with you, and then the whole county, and then the whole state, you know, and then the whole country, and then the whole world. And everybody's out there standing out in the open, and the weather's fine because we just fixed it. There's no chemtrails in the sky. And babies, we join and unite our heart and open the door and finish the job that Mother Earth's been up to for a long, long time now. Bring her back into reunion with her heart. And the Son and the Mother, S-U-N, and the Son in the Sky, and the Mother become as one. And everything takes on its more natural glow that we don't see anymore down here in this hellhole we've been living in, did we? But this is where we reform it. This is where the road to hell leads to paradise. And all of it's worth it. No matter what you've been through. No matter what you're going through. Hey, we all are up against it one way or another. But you got to let your life change. And not stand in the way. If you're being challenged in that way, take a look at the direction of it. Listen to your heart. Go with that flow. Don't get in the way of it anymore, okay? You're going to be just fine. I know it's the winds of change and they're blowing like crazy. I know it seems like a frightening place where you don't even know what's going to be going on there. I know that. I understand that. I'm a human being too, guys, for heck's sakes. Maybe more human than most humans are. <laughs> Definitely have my weaknesses and strengths, don't I? But at the same time, babies, we share a common dream, a commonality, a collective heart. A collective vision then of what creation is. And that's our cosmic side of ourselves, And that's what we're letting in here. And that's why we're gathering out under the bright sun here in just a little while. And we're going to say no to the old ways. And bring on the new ones while we're at it. See? And none of their exotic weaponry. Their sound weapons. Their scalar weapons. Their shitty weapons. Their nose booger pickers. And all that kind of stuff put together. Will stop this movement. We'll neutralize the toxicity in them to start with. And then we'll go on to your nuclear weaponry and so forth and dismantle it all without putting a hand to it, baby. You think the ETs are showing you something when they shut those things down? They're just showing you how really powerless you are until you get out of your stupidity. What did you ever need nukes for? What are you so afraid of or so bloodthirsty about that you got to destroy the whole earth again? Huh. <laughs> I mean, really, got to think. I mean, that is complete insanity. And it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't make right, right. It doesn't make wrong, wrong. It doesn't do damn things that kill a whole bunch of people and energies and powers and animals. And, I mean, you know, wipe out the kingdom for a while. Which we then have to come and recreate as spirit presences again and provide a good home for ourselves as physical presences so we can finish the job. See, that's what you missed in all those times where we went down. Was then you got to come back around, do it again. You, you know, I mean, how many times you got to do this till you get it right? Well, 33 must be the number because I think that's what we're up to now. Or maybe it's 63. I don't know. We've been through a lot of serious changes in this reality. I know geologically many uh, uh, geologists that aren't afraid of this system don't mind talking about it. Say we've been like through, uh, and by the geological evidence, at least 32 really big wipeouts here in humanity and the earth, you know, in this 3D world. You know, that's the evidence they find in the dirt below us and the stones below us and so forth. You know, we've lived magnificently high before, far grander than what we're doing now with our piece of shit automobiles and trucks and planes and boats and trains. This is such an archaic backwards thing when you look at it from the avenues of the heart it looks like you know stone age shit and it is we're not quite out of the age of darkness yet we are right now see as of yesterday i think we're standing on the precipice of the end of time you know so babies it's it's your time it's your season now we can all come out from under the gun and blossom in the sun because that's what we're here to be. So I've been trying to block out the sun. Besides, you know, it's got to do a purpose course. But that part of it too, the, this energy of the sun right now is so clarifying for most human beings. And will activate strands in their DNA that nobody ever knew you had. Nobody. Not the scientists, not anybody. We're pretty well disguised. 
but the strands of perfection is when everything comes back out of 3D and goes back through what you call 5D and, and begins to expand from there. It goes See, dimensions can't be measured, so the numbers on dimensions is stupid. <laughs> You're just describing levels from a human side where you don't know. So it's okay, but it's still stupid to think that way, you know. I mean, there's as many dimensions as you want there to be, and as many divisions too. But as you grow and expand in this loving way, those divisions melt away. You know, we're a collective creation, really. It ain't just humanity. We're the center little seed. We're the kernel nugget of it. We're where it all comes from, you know. But at the same time, it's all like us because we're like that too, see. Everything is creation and everything is creator creating and loving itself for the experience of it. Doesn't take much to understand that. Doesn't take much to that experience that, really. Difficult as hell at times when you're feeling all divided, isn't it? And you listen to that mean little thing inside that's still raging. Is it? Oh, what does that old fricker know, man? I don't know nothing, man. He couldn't even flick his bit. Well, let me show you. I can, too. <laughs> Here's saluting you with my sweet token, the sacred herb of Mary Jane, who helps you expand and get out of your brain into your heart, okay? I mean, it's just been such an awesome weekend. I hope you had one too, man. And, you know, just token on this little bit of sacred herb reminds me of where it came from. You know, what was it? Saturday morning, I'm going through town, stopping to get a cup of coffee on my way or something. And I'm on my way out to Joyful Journey. And some young man comes up to me and says, Hey, Grandpa Coyote, I'd love to give you some weed. This guy I barely know. I've seen him around a little bit, but not much. And he just gave me like, you know, quarter ounce or something. Some really righteous, you know, just off the cure Fresh Harvest, Purple Haze, and some other blends. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, you know, life just gets better and better every day that we live, doesn't it, you know? And that's what start. Ooh, but there was, ah, oh man, some animal. As I'm driving out early in the day, it's still kind of dark, you know? Was it yesterday? Oh, yeah. Some animal, small animal, like dog size. I don't think it was a dog, though, I, you know, but it was dog size. It might have been a cat. Because I did see another one around the corner and down the road a bit. I saw, like, what would you call those things? Lynx. Yeah, I saw a long-legged lynx. Tall one. I couldn't believe it. But there they are. But anyway, something like that ran into the side of my car as I'm traveling through the darkness. I just saw a white flash and heard a big thunk, or kawam, really. And, you know, I got a little extra din in my car, but not much. But you can see where they hit it, broadside. They must have really been running after something, whatever it was. Well, this team I was working with when I'm on the light machine or the crystal beds up there in Denver, man, they like uh, uh, was telling me that, oh, yeah, that's your dark buddies. They always got to have a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice, if they're going to give in, etc. Anytime they make a move, they got to have an animal sacrifice. Well, sometimes it's a human one, but we don't know about that, do we? No, that's in the background in the secret, quiet places like Bohemian Grove and shit that nobody knows about, you know. Well, really, it goes on mostly underground in ritual rooms that are created all around this earth. You don't even know about it. yet. You can remember if you've ever been there. You know, I don't care how bad they blocked your memories or how many memories they planted on top of memories and so forth. You're getting it straightened out, aren't you? See, just hanging on here with Grandpa day after day will help you do that. Because I'm, I'm a pro at that shit, man. You know, it doesn't mean I haven't put up a lot of agony in the process. I sure have. But I'm a pro at getting done with that stuff, babies. I'm going to help you be a pro, too. And this earth as well. This October, babies, we just we'll knock their socks off. This is going to be Rocktober because it already is rock and roll, ain't it? Well, you got the rock and roll medicine show that soothes you heart and soul and gets you up dancing, don't you know? And floating like a cloud, too, man. We get you flying, get you high, get you running wise in this life so the boogers can't mess with you anymore, okay? And they really can't. Once you get this centering point, I mean, this, this is my experience at this moment. They will try repeatedly, they being those who think they oppose you, will try repeatedly to get in in the old way and hang that darkness on you so you got to deal with that all day long too you know so far it ain't hooked it's nothing to hook to it just goes by and all i see is and all i feel is love love coming my way and going that way i don't see any restriction i see some awful intention of the past 
But I don't even see that there now. I just see people that need rescue, so that's their way of getting it. So here goes. And I mean people. Human beings have been doing this, you know, sending this awful energy and making me struggle and all that shit, you know. But I didn't struggle with it. You know, I don't. I don't struggle. Very rarely that I struggle. You know, you can never say never because you never know. But basically, I go with the flow and just do what I got to do in the time I got to do it, you know. And if you can just get the hang of this, babies, your life will open up. Everything you ever needed, wanted, desired, etc. from the heart will be there with you, for you, working with you because it already is. You just catch the momentum of the universe and you accelerate, see. That's the other aspect of what we're here to be. So you ready to set yourself free? I thought you might be. <laughs> the Coyote Medicine Show on the Hazy Radio Network where it's ever clear, man. Rock and roll, great for your heart and soul. Of course, timeless music that keeps open and multidimensional aspects of our heart and soul. I hope you can experience the pleasure of that right now. But if you don't, don't you know we got a lot more medicine to go on this Coyote Medicine Show? And we'll make sure you do be in the flow before the end of this day. Ooh, we got it underway here in a hazy way, baby. Getting it clear, dear. <laughs> Just as it should be. Oh, and let me salute you with my Coyote Club mug, you bet. As Pope Mary Jane awakening the masses one toke at a time, babies. So divine, eh? I tell you, when the reality of that really hits you, when you realize you too are Pope Mary Jane, well then, see, we own it all, we got it all, and everybody else just get out of the way and go along, okay? <laughs> it's a coyote thing, don't you know? <laughs>